Hi there, it's Kathy Hamrick once again with Country Road Stampers. Hope you're having a great day today. Earlier on my blog this week, I posted this card and told you to take a close look at it to see if you could figure out what kind of technique I used on it. And the technique focus is right here. I've seen a lot of demonstrators using our shimmer paint, which is still available. It was in the holiday catalog and it's still available. We have it in four colors, which are frost wet, excuse me, frost white, Vegas gold, bright copper, and I believe the other one is like champagne or champagne mist. I didn't bring it. I did. It's champagne mist. So those are the four colors. And I've seen them doing all sorts of stuff, especially with the copper one. But I thought, you know, I might not always want copper or gold. I might want some color. And you might want some color. So I decided to figure out if I could get our refills to work with these shimmer paints. And they do. And you can get some fun new looks using our shimmer paints with the ink refills. So I'm going to show you something easy to do. Now, it's what I did here. I actually used um, a stamp from Nature's Roots, I believe it was, or In the Woods, one of those two. And I inked up the stamp. I simply took a stamp, like you know a stamp, and a dauber, and I worked, I just shook up the shimmer paint and worked from the lid and used that dauber with that lid and just took it and covered the stamp. Now, to get that look, you have to let that dry, and then once it dries, I'll show you what you do to make this pop. So it's kind of like embossing resist, which is a technique most of you are probably familiar with. But once you kind of mix the colors, which I told you wrong on this, I said I worked out the lid, and I did not because I mixed a color on this. I put them on our clear blocks, and I work from them, which is really easy, and it's easy to clean up, but you're more likely to waste some of your paint if you use a clear block as opposed to working right off of the cap. So there is that. So just remember, less is more. Start out with a small drop and go from there. So let me show you exactly how I did this technique, only we're going to do it using the trees from Winter Woods, which is still available. It was also in the holiday catalog. So I chose to mix up some paint using Poppy Parade, and I used our ink refill with just a little drop of the frost white, and it will give you a metallic look in case you're wondering why even fool with this. You can just use an ink refill, but if you mix it with the shimmer paint, it gives it a little metallic sparkle when you don't have to go over it with anything. It sparkles quite on its own. Then I mixed up a little bit of crushed curry also, but I actually miss, mixed it up with our Vegas gold because I thought maybe that would give it a little bit different look. And then I'm going to just use the copper straight from the lid. So several different things to try. But you have to do this technique on glossy paper. That's the only way it will work. So there's a piece of glossy. So let's start. We're going to use the Poppy Parade that I've mixed with the Frost White. And I'm just going to cover one of the trees here. Now I hope I remember because I forgot on one of my samples to go back and do the tree trunks. And I don't want a red tree trunk, so I want to do that at the end. Then I will take, let's do the copper, because I think I will do it here on an end. And you want to kind of work fast, because you don't want these inks to dry. And it is messy. You can see I have ink all over my hands, because I've been working with this most of the morning. And I think I'll try this tree also, making sure you get good coverage. Now that leaves me with some yellow. And we'll go with the tree here that will be with the crushed curry yellow. And then I think I'm going to try one more there with some poppy parade right there in the middle. I think I got enough on this block that I can pull that in there. Okay, now I did the stumps, so we should be covered. Now I'm just going to move this glossy paper right over here. We're just going to stamp. I want to make sure I get good, even pressure so that all those areas are covered. Then pop it up, and it will kind of stick. Now see, that just looks pretty neat right there, and it has just a little bit of a sparkle to it. 
Now, I'm going to add, <laughs> I learned the hard way that you really need to have something below here or your trees are just sitting up in the atmosphere somewhere. So I'm going to add just a little bit of the copper and I'm just going to shake that up in the bottle so then it's in the lid like that and I can work straight from that lid with my dauber. You can also use a paint, uh, an aqua painter to put the ink on here, but I will tell you, you have to be very careful because it gets really wet and then it can kind of smear on you and then it's not very pretty. So it's better if you use a dauber. I've tried it both ways. Okay, so now I've also got the base of my trees so they're not hanging around in the air. Now you can wait till this air dries if you like. I've actually taken the heat gun to mine and kind of dried it with the heat gun till it was good and dry, but you want to make sure it is dry to do the next part of this technique. So I, of course, have one that was already done. It's not as pretty as this one is, but I did this one earlier. So now you're going to want to take some form of dark ink. Early espresso would work, but um, I really have preferred to take the memento ink because it's really dark. So I'll show you what to do. You can just you can just work with our little brayer if you'd like, and you just run that across, and then you can just let's see. I better work this way, and you can just roll it on like so. But this takes a while, and I am very impatient. I don't like waiting. So I just took the stamp pad and I drug it across. And you're probably going, oh my goodness, what is she doing? That is going to be so ugly. But it's not. It's going to look pretty. But you could do the same thing with an early espresso pad and go across that till you got the coverage that you wanted. So I'm going to have to get down to business here because it's not getting dark fast. But you can see what I mean about the ink. Now, at some point, I'm going to take that brayer and kind of smooth that ink out. Because remember, we're working on glossy paper. It will smooth easily. Wow, that almost looks like there's a storm coming in on this one. I kind of like that look, too. So now you can see that it's starting to resist where that was stamped. And I realize this is the wrong time of year for this kind of card, but this would make a good sympathy card. It would make a good guy's card because it has that masculine flair to it. But it is messy. When you get to this part, of course, if you only use the brayer, then you wouldn't make the mess that I'm making here. But it would also take you longer. And it has to have time to dry, because the glossy just takes a little bit longer, so you have to be careful with fingerprints, too. So let's just go. I think that's the best of it right there. That's pretty much got it covered. So you have the general idea. Cap that off so I don't lay my cards down in it. Then you can take a paper towel. Now I have a nasty looking rag here that I keep for this kind of stuff and I do mean it's nasty looking so I'm just going to kind of take it off here and just go over that. Oh, and I forgot that will shake the camera too. So see now your color pops so much more. I really think this is neat because it just has a shine to it. I don't know if it shows up in there for you that shine, but it's just very and it's flat. There's no added texture to it. So of course I went ahead and finished a couple of these up. So that's the same technique that I did with these leaves. Only when I did this, I used pear pizzazz with the frost white shimmer, and then I went over it with mossy meadow for the darker green to make that pop then this is the one that i forgot to add the dirt to the base of the trees so i had to cover it up <laughs> with <laughs> with our edged ribbon that way you can't tell that i left the dirt out but i thought this was really pretty and all i did with this was i just used the copper shimmer paint and put it on there nothing else was added just the copper shimmer paint and then once that dried i took the dark ink over it and that's really striking. You don't have to add anything else to that card. And then I had some fun. This was like the one that I just showed you using our wooden texture paper, backed it. And this looks like a great fall card. And then the little pieces of the burlap twine added to it. So I like this. Now the shimmer paint, you can do that. You can also 
just paint your images. Just make sure your ink is really dry before you start because it will smear. And I also did one where I embossed the images and then painted it. So and on one of those where I painted, I actually used the aqua painter as opposed to using a dauber. But it is it just adds a certain shimmer to all of your ink. So it's really neat. I think out of the ones, I do believe this one is my favorite, though I do like that the best. Okay, I hope you can give that a try. That's using our shimmer paints and our ink refills. It just makes a new kind of look. Just something a little bit different for you to give a try. Thanks for stopping by. See ya.